Okay, I want to uh, call the uh, Capital Improvement Committee meeting together on Friday, January 11th, 2019. It's 11.04. Uh, um, we'll call the meeting to order. We're going to skip over item two and we'll go uh, item three with reorganization. So we'll turn the meeting over to Mr. Administrator. This way you want to do it. This way we did it last year, right? Mm -hmm. So the record is I'm not a member. Guys, <coughs> providing you with my temporary Assistance. services. Okay. The question comes on the reorganization of the committee. Are there any nominations for chair? Kent Vincent. I nominate Kent Vincent. Second. There's been one nomination of Mr. Vincent, Chief Vincent. Any other nominations? Move that nominations be closed. Second. The motion has been made that nominations be closed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nominations are closed. The question is now on whether or not Chief Vincent shall serve as chairman of the committee. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, we also want to uh, nominate a vice chairman. Nominate John Ferno. Shirley, second. Shirley. <laughs> you still can't. Did, <laughs> did it quick, Shirley. Proud of you. <laughs> Move that nominations be closed. Okay, uh, we have one nomination for John Ferno as the vice chair of the capital committee. Any further discussion? All in favor of John Ferno for vice chair? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right, so that brings us up to our um, a discussion of uh, bringing the Capital Committee meeting together prior to us starting to meet with department heads and go over what uh, the needs of are of each department. Um, and we had talked about, um, Mr. Wojcik came in last year and we were just starting the process. We sort of had to rush. Um, after after we started, um, so um, in talking to Mr. Wojcik, the town administrator, we talked about maybe uh, having some discussion on uh, how we grade, how we what our grading process is, what what we're using for criteria, and, and maybe taking a look at that before we before we start meeting with the department heads. Um, and I believe, Mr. Town Administrator, you may have some suggestions as well. Um, well, I do. I'll, I'll brief the committee as best I can. The uh, goal of the town is to bring its entire budget process up to um, an award level, a certification level from the Government Financial Officers Association. It's a national standard. Only 10 communities in Massachusetts have the designation now. Um, a friend of mine used to drive around with a license plate that was aim high. My buddy Gil Perez from one socket, God rest his soul. Um, but that's a great thing. We should, it's a very good idea to follow best practices to the greatest extent. And it may take us a couple of years to get there, but one of the major components of a really robust, transparent budget presentation for the public is a capital improvement plan. And in reviewing recent practices in Massachusetts, there was a very nice plan put together by the McCormick Center, the, the UMass uh, entity that is focused on municipal affairs for the town of Munson. And it was done just last year for fiscal 2018. It was a five-year plan. So we circulated it, I thought, last year. I don't we think circulated so. again. Okay. Um, I spent some time looking at it yesterday. Yeah. It's 45 pages. Mm -hmm. So it's not really, in the grand scheme of things, that's not a heavy lift. It's 45 pages with charts and mm -hmm. with graphs and other things. The fundamental building blocks of a good plan, first and foremost, is the situation assessment. So where do we stand today? What do we own? What is its capacity? How old is it? What role does it play in the town? And believe it or not, that's, for a lot of folks, that ends up being the first time they really did that inventory. It's a, mm -hmm. a high level of detail. Now, for our municipal departments, um, 
because we're covered by Maya for property and casualty, we have actually quite a bit of information that's already compiled. But you have to go above and beyond the insurance factor and just think, well, what else do we have? We may not necessarily have insure it under insurance individually, yeah. but we still have to fix it if it's broken. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's task one, is to get all of that and then to assess its condition. I think it's a bigger issue for water and sewer. Uh, because I don't know really when was the last time that they had to specifically write all this stuff down and for their own purposes be introspective. Do we know where all our pipes are? Do we know where all our meters are? Where all the major valves are and where our plants are? <clears throat> but all of those things have to be done because when we go to the public and ask them to part with taxpayer funds to pay these, to fix these things, we should be able to point to something that's been published and discussed and say, well, you know, it's not a surprise. This is where we are. We will have any number of surprises along the way. So let's just try to narrow the scope of what the surprises could be. Uh, the next step then is to, uh, in my mind anyway, try to reconcile where we stand with the budget. How much can we really afford every year in capital? Uh, not how much can we afford if we make capital the lowest priority and we only take whatever falls off the plate put it into capital, but how much can we afford to do, how much can we not afford not to do every year? And that becomes a capital, uh, your capital budget really, year over year. And sometimes you have big humps that you have to get over in order to be able to smooth things out. But the, the lesson that gets proven time and time and time again is that a well-run municipality will replace assets on a regular basis and not kick the can down the road and get to a point where you can't plow the snow because all your plows are too old and you got to outsource everything and you can't drive an ambulance, you got to get mutual aid for everything because that's all broken. Oh, by the way, fire engines are half a million dollars a piece and we need three of them and none of them work. And then all of a sudden you come to town meeting and say, we need a big, great, big, huge capital exclusion and everybody scratches their head and says, oh my God, that's a lot of money. Really, if you do this, 400, 500, I don't know what the number is, 400, 500, 600,000 a year, you get to a point where that's all it ever is. But when the men and women who work for the town hop in a piece of equipment to respond to it, it works. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So you've got to get to, you have to understand what that run rate is after you understand where your base is, what is your run rate, and then there's the actual process thereafter of well, how do we score proposals um, to get into the capital budget and then you can kind of go at this more than one way. You can do that annually and score things, and you probably should still do it anyway, but really once the plan is established, you should have a pretty good idea what's already on there. You're going into a rating process because you <coughs> need an orderly way to determine whether something that has broken in the last year is more or less That's important life is. than what is already in the plan. Sure. So for this year, we may not have originally thought of this, but because we've had a problem with public safety radios this year, that might be one item that comes up. Uh, we, it is going to be an item that comes up. It's going to display something else. So you need a rating system to determine how things are. Uh, the rating system that's been used by the town Last year, I think we all came to the conclusion mm -hmm. that it was really kind of, it, it generated warped results. And we ended up, you know, scoring pipes higher than an ambulance, and we didn't have a functioning ambulance. So that was kind of a weird result. We'll probably this year address, um, I kind of go, I have gone back and forth intellectually <laughs> on whether a police cruiser is capital. It, it, it meets the definition of it on some levels, but on other levels, and this is where Jean has always been, and I'm starting to agree with her more and more that police cruisers and ambulances are disposables. Mm -hmm. They're not capital because they have a very short useful life, but more importantly, they're junk when we're done with them. They just, they have no value. We, we, we use the whole thing and we spend it out and then it's done and we gotta get rid of it and replace it on a very regular schedule. You, when you read the Munson Capital Report, you'll see that the McCormick Center and the people that pulled that thing together agreed with the general, they really think cruisers are not capital. And they actually, ambulances, they kind of went back and forth on. But 
I think we've more and more and more we have this experience now with ambulances, which because they idle, because they run so often, because the technology is rapidly changing, once the thing is five years old, it's junk. It'll have over 200,000 miles, how many hundreds of hours, and it just, it, 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 unless you never used it, right. it's not, it's not something you want to keep running. But everything else we do, our buildings, uh, most of the highway equipment, all those things have useful life that's well over five years mm -hmm. and fairly expensive. So uh, that's all what we're aiming to do. And I think what, um, from my personal view, because I've got to do the rest of the GFOA presentation, <laughs> which is very difficult, I want to push this back to department heads. You know, if you're going to come into the request process, you have to do the your situation assessment. Now, last year we started this actually already with, with John's department where we got all the roads and sidewalks in. We have a listing. Mm -hmm. And this year we'll probably go out and have <coughs> uh, someone do a scientific study of all those things to verify what's there to put a pavement asset management plan in place for us. So we're kind of digging into this already mm -hmm. on, the, on that part of it. Roads are capital. Believe it or not, I've had this fight with politicians in the past who don't want to think of roads as capital. That's the dumbest, uh, some of the dumbest people I've ever had an argument with. Roads are capital. <laughs> it costs money, they have a useful life of 30 years, and most of our other assets are useless if our roads are impassable. So, yeah, you got to take... I think the problem for those for the politicians in that town was they didn't want to take ownership. The roads were in such bad condition, they didn't want to be held accountable for the fact that they cut the paving budget whenever they were short somewhere else. And then eventually the slush fund ran out of money. Um, the other thing is, I don't know, I get the feeling in the past that the attitude was, well, the schools are on their own and this has to come out of their budget. Uh, and that's not true. Um, municipalities have to step up and take responsibility for the fact that school buildings and school assets are capital for the whole town, and that we look at the entire capital budget includes the schools. And so last year we made... And that's general law. Yeah. It that way. So it actually, it's never been looked at that way any time I've ever been. Yeah. It's never looked at that way. So last year we did put school projects in. We funded them, and I think they're all done, right? Not all of them. Most, an update, most of them. Brought in, I brought an updated update on all of them. Okay. If they all want it. Well, I think that will be our next step. So what we're, we're going to try to replicate the Munson example uh, very quickly, really within the next three or four weeks. Department heads, we want to, so one of the things I'm asking you as a committee to do is to direct the department heads to uh, review the relevant portions of the Munson, Munson plan and respond to it. <laughs> My stomach making all that noise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. So that's I what all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, I looked over a little bit of the Munson report yesterday, and I think they got a nice little section on page, if you want to write it down, 17 and 18 of the Munson report. And if you just put in Munson report, capital M plan, M-U-N, M-O-N, S-O-N, Munson report, capital plan, it's 2018 to 2022. And on pages 17 and 18, um, is the capital planning evaluation criteria, which I think really would be basically the breakdown of our rating process. We just got to come up with a rating process. But some questions that it asks about a project, how we evaluate it would be, uh, does it preserve or enhance the town assets? Does the project maintain or improve existing facilities? Um, what is the anticipated useful life? We've already done that. Does mm -hmm. the does the proposed project replace a piece of equipment needed to provide public service? Is the vehicle beyond its reasonable life? Uh, is the acquisition part of a scheduled replacement plan that will keep vehicles operational and, and major uh, repair costs? Increase in uh, the effectiveness of government? I, we had, I don't think we ever approached it from that perspective, is does it, does it increase the effectively of gov effectiveness of government or how the town operates? Um, does the project reduce operating costs or increase? Mm -hmm. Does the project reduce potential legal liability? We never really talked about that, mm -hmm. but I think that's a big 
important mm -hmm. part of the puzzle. Right. Right. Uh, or, th or does it? Th uh, is it a threat to the operations? In other words, if a street sweeper breaks down and you've got motorcycles driving on sand, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so those are things that we need to consider. So um, those are some things that I would highly suggest that we all look at and maybe we can I get our department heads to look it, at. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. love to see a copy. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, also well, I'll pass that around right now. Yeah, but but, I but what I'm thinking, we'll do that in the future for our next meeting or whatever and get Yeah, I think get it needs to be for the next meeting before we can right. move forward. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I sort of looked at that and I brought our grading sheet from when we did before. Uh, I think we hit a lot of those. We did. But I, I, think, I think the question of how, how, to, how the project or lack of funding of a project affects liability. Mm -hmm. Now Shirley, you and I both sort of agreed on that when we, when we, when we talked about the booster station. Oh. People calling into a booster station. Now, that's fixed now, but that's an issue. That's a liability. It's not only that, that if you short something out, now you don't have mm -hmm. water to pump hydrants and a fire. You know, mm -hmm. it's just sort of a, a cascading effect. Um, yeah. Things like that that we need to consider. And right. I think if we, if we look at that, we try to, um, maybe we could provide a copy at the next meeting so that everyone can look at it. But in, in the event, in the meantime, oh, okay. In the meantime, I would I would think uh, that we can we can look at that stuff, and I think you'll find. I looked at it yesterday. I, I found uh, specifically that that criteria and the evaluation process some very good sounds, questions. Sounds good. So they explain in detail how they came to. It. Did they weigh certain things higher than another, and then have a scale on each one of those items? Yeah, so they, they're coming to a scoring system. I, I had two things to add, Mr. Chairman. Okay, that's fine. Um, one is, as part of the situation assessment, I think department heads should be directed to say, what is your configuration for your department? It may not be what you have today. So I, John and I talked about this quite a bit. You know, you may have a legacy bunch of decisions were made where Highway in Douglas, everything's a 10-wheeler, and I'm exaggerating to make mm -hmm. the point. You know, and, <clears throat> you know, the only lawnmower you have is a uh, wide as a house. <laughs> yeah. And that all <laughs> makes sense because somebody made that decision because, well, we have, you know, 500 acres to cut, and that's going to be the fastest and best way. Right. You may decide to do something completely different. Okay. And maybe that's smaller equipment, and you, there are things you never bought but should have because right. you overemphasized big stuff <coughs> in the past. That's so in addition to the situation assessment, there's what is your professional judgment, what is your recommendation, what you should have. Because that's that's sort of step a gap, one. Gap analysis kind of thing. And um, right. yeah, exactly. And then the the second thought I had looking through the scoring system, we talked about the old scoring system gave you credit if you were on the list for a long time because uh, supposedly, I guess, that would bump you up if you had a, right. a critical yeah. need. I think the best way to handle that, to capture the same concept without giving you points for simply putting things on the list so they'd be there, is give the project X number of points based on the percentage of time it has been in our inventory beyond its useful life. So, you know, if a fire engine has a useful life of 15 years, but we have one that's 30 years old, well then now it's 100% beyond its useful life, that should be a higher point value yeah, that makes sense. than a dump truck that's two years past its useful life. And that way, it's got nothing to do about when you put it on the list, mm -hmm. it has everything to do with just how spent is it, mm -hmm. and is it part of your critical list, mm -hmm. getting back to that plan. So, you know, you know you need eight plows, and six of them are way over their useful life, that should start to kick in pick and up, and because you've designated a critical asset. And then if something ages out that's not critical, well, maybe we'll replace it, maybe we won't. Yeah, and I know the report, the Munson one, actually brings up a point that, you know, if something breaks, if something breaks and now we need it, that's a problem. So we shouldn't have got to that point. Um, 
so and that's how we, we're trying to evaluate looking down the road um, the best way to approach things uh, and, and you're absolutely right it's sort of like how we did the five-year budget once we agreed on it that's our budget for five years as, as give or take any little yeah, things that might happen that but, in, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah and I think that's what we were doing really was kicking the can down the road and, and getting the scrap money <laughs> if I may yep. um, some years back um, when I first got on the board of selectmen and we asked the departments for a five-year plan and it was moving that's why you got Mm -hmm. things replaced um, because they were just too old they were so badly mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. needed but um, things were moving along until the economy kind of so right. everything was kind of on hold and one of the reasons for the capital plan was you got planning instead of who got the most people at the town meeting to back their individual projects. Mm. So, yes, what you're saying completely makes sense to me because been there, done that, worked at it, but when you hit where there's no money, and we really got to the point that if we didn't pass the override, we were in really dire straits. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think we need to really look at this and look at what's what the town can really do with it and and individual you know we're not Monson but what is needed for us and I you know I'll be more than glad to have the guidance for that. I, I think sure. it's a good idea um, I agree with everything you just said I think that looking at the way they evaluate those and what so obviously they don't want to get to critical mass right they want to they want to catch it somewhere in between where mm -hmm. it's not out but what are the preventative maintenance schedules for mm -hmm. those things that are already in place so we can maximize their mm -hmm. useful life? Mm -hmm. I think those, in, at least in my history, it's kind of, you don't want to put the cart before the horse. Right. You want to make sure you have a nice cart, then a nice horse, you know, so. Right. And, and we were, that took on, you know, we did that too. We encouraged that because if you didn't have good maintenance and sure. records, the police department, mm -hmm. um, right. You know, and and that was being done. Um, and John, you know, oh, yeah. he took over highway. And yeah. So, yeah. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, Suzanne. And I think we've improved as far as uh, the maintenance and what. I just I know that just. Yeah, I do. When I first became chief, I mean, uh, yeah. there was no money. And absolutely. So I didn't have money even. <coughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah. we're not at that point now. But uh, what I'm saying is, uh, as far as maintenance goes, we're, we're pretty good with that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, okay, so there was no money, and now we do have money, but I think we have to be responsible, Correct. as I'm sure you all agree, no to the townspeople to use it wisely, mm -hmm. as we've tried. So, and with this and Matt and... Everybody working together, I think um, we'll get there. So why Munson? Just so I just don't want to throw that up there. It's not a crazy example. I mean, it's no. a very similar sized town. I was going to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. And their underlying budget structure is also similar to ours. So okay. their school aid profile is close to ours. And so it's, it's actually about as good an analogy as we're going to get anywhere else in the Commonwealth. I think the only real difference there is that they're about seven miles, seven square miles bigger than us. Yeah. We're 37, they're 44. But they had a tornado come through. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. So, you know, they had some catching up and some, some ground to make up, much like we do. We have some ground to make up. We're behind. We're, we're playing catch up where we're at. While we're on the subject, I want to welcome Cesar Martinez to our, to our group. Yes. Welcome. Certainly. Yes. Uh, Look forward to working with you. Thank yep. you for stepping Likewise, up. Thank you. Yep. And uh, to any anybody out there that you know, there's still openings on the capital committee. We could definitely use your help for sure. So. 
So, Mr. Chairman, if you would indulge us, I think we need to update the com committee on where we stand with the projects that were authorized Absolutely. by town meeting. Oh, yes. Courtney's here. Uh, I'm going to abandon this chair so Courtney can be on camera to do the schools, and then we'll catch up on the municipal right after Courtney's finished. But I thought you guys might want to know. I should lose a sec. One more. Okay. So, um, you know, certainly the school department appreciates um, the work. We were quite surprised because as you guys uh, have spoken, you know, in the past, I mean, there was a good process in the past. Um, yeah. You know, we did bring forward and, and look ahead and, and all of that. But as we all know, with limited funds, there's only mm -hmm. so much you can do. But I can say, and I am speaking on behalf of all of the school department, we have always felt that the town of Douglas and this, this committee always included us, you know, in the process and that we, you know, we appreciate your thoughtfulness. Mm -hmm. And whether we got some years we got no projects approved at all, but we knew that it had nothing to do with the school department or anything. It just was limited funds, and that's the way it is. So, you know, but so we really did appreciate it. We weren't expecting to get that many approved last year, but we do appreciate it. So, um, so we had the high school security cameras approved, um, the high school water booster pump, the primary school door key security um, system throughout the school for the doors, and the district wide tractor, tractor loader. And the high school, um, the, um, the compre air conditioner compressor, and the middle school door card reader. So the ones that have been completed so far, um, the water booster pump was just completed over the December vacation. Um, the amount approved was thirty-two thousand six hundred and forty dollars. The final cost was twenty-seven thousand nine sixty-eight. We also had the tractor loader was done right away because that was an easy one. Um, the amount approved was fourteen thousand four fourteen. The final cost was thirteen thousand three twenty-six, and the high school air, condi air conditioner compressor was approved at ten thousand. Um, final cost nine thousand two seventy. So those three have been completed. Um, the security cameras is almost complete. We're just waiting for um, the wiring has been done. The installation will be done once the cameras have been received. They've been ordered, but that'll take a little bit of time. Um, at the middle school, the door card reader. Uh, luckily, it turned out we thought we'd have to have some wiring and additional, more extensive work needed to be done, but it turned out not to be so. So um, we have a quote right now of eight thousand nine thirty-eight twenty-eight. The amount approved was ten thousand, and actually the installation for that, because it's the same vendor as the security cameras, um, will be done at the same time. For efficiency, just while the weather out here, they'll do that at the same time. The only one left that's really kind of caused me a little bit of angst is the. Um, primary school door key security. So the part of that that is, is developed is coming up with the um, specifications. It's just a little bit more uh, complicated. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the final one to be done. But now we're in the budget process and a whole bunch of other things. So it kind of, I'm just going to have to, I hate to say that, but put that off a little bit. And um, hopefully in April that will be done. Again, when you have schools open, it's kind of difficult to have things done when, um, so we're hoping the April vacation, that's what I'm aiming for anyway. Um, and I think that is everything. Does anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. I do, mm -hmm. if I may. Sure. Um, so the amount approved at town meeting was 32000 Mm-hmm. So you've got an estimated quote? Yeah, the quote is thirty five six ninety nine zero three. We had to make an adjustment to. We only, to be honest with you, we had such a short period of time to get things done last mm -hmm. year that we were only given like three days and so uh, you know, <laughs> we did the best we could in the three days yeah. to get things to you. Yeah. So it ended up. So we obviously pay the difference. So right. it came out of our budget. Okay, because you yeah. have had some that have come in um, less than mm -hmm. what was approved. So. Yeah, most of them did. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't. We paid for it out of our budget, though. Okay. Yeah, for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wouldn't. We didn't request like to come. No, because it really, to be honest with you, it really shouldn't be that way. Because each project is yep. is a standalone. So we sure. we understood that. And um, I did check with Matt, um, just make sure we had a little bit of quote thing, whatever, but he even understood we were, we were paying for that. Okay. Um, so the overage, the, the school yeah. was 
yeah. out of their budget. Now the water booster pump, something came in a little bit more than the, we had a quote just for the pump itself at 25,926, I believe it was. But then we had some additional work that had to be done because the valve broke and things. But again, in working with Matt and Jean, um, because it was for that project, they did approve the, the little bit of additional amount. It still came in under, sure. but to be paid for under that. But of course, we spoke with them first and got approval first for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. okay. That sounds good. Thank mm -hmm. you, Courtney. Yeah, no problem. And if you don't mind, am I just making one more comment along the line with what you guys were talking about earlier um, and what um, Matt was talking about? You know, you've, like I said, you had a, a very good process in the past and, you know, maybe just you know, moving forward and all that. But I know that in the past, I know, you know, when you have no money, and sometimes I'll get a little, which by people get irritated, like, why do I have to come up with a list? <laughs> or, you know, I know I'm not going to get anything. And I always go right back and I tell them, because the most important thing is to educate the residents and taxpayers Excellent. of what all the needs are, because it's not going to go away. And even in, when I was in Uxbridge, when I was a finance director, we actually worked on a 30-year, believe it or not. It took a lot. We actually had to have vendors come in and whatever for even replacement of windows. You know, say you're not going to do a whole building. Everything starts, I want to say falling apart, but they're used. once you start using it, it starts going down that road of mm -hmm. needing to be replaced. So, um, you know, it's really good to come up with a comprehensive list so that way you're not coming in. And then at the last minute, bringing before town meeting, saying, wow, we, we need, you know, $5 million worth mm -hmm. of things. Like, how come you never told us about this? <laughs> right. But so we have been telling them, and we'll continue to tell them so that they're not surprised, you know. So, you know, that's a really good thing. And I do, think so. you will still get that, but at least oh, it's yeah. been out there more less. than once. <laughs> yeah. And it's repetitious. Yeah. And right, right. It becomes it's right more out there. comprehensive. Right. It's right out there for the public to see. And it's right. not like we've been hiding anything or, you know, they right. didn't know because we, we let them know more and more. And per what Matt's been talking about, we'll let them know even more extensively what our needs are. Right. So, which is a great thing. It's a good mm -hmm. thing for everybody. Yeah. And it's a good thing for planning, too, for all of us. So, And I think you in know. the past, we've Mm. We've always brought up the fact that look, you can't. It's like yeah. your house. Yeah, you right. have to keep you maintaining it, right, and anytime. you just can't let yeah. things go. That's right. and that's been yeah. mentioned here already. Yeah. So <coughs> the only other question that I would have, if you don't mind, um, just if you guys could let us know. You know how you brought up the analogy on the um, ambulances and the cruisers, which I understand. So it made me think, and I made a little note, Matt, um, and, and, and all of you. The iPads and computers, because they're kind of, I know you don't drive them, but they have that useful life of next to night. So if you guys could let us know what, what your thoughts are on those mm -hmm. as well um, going forward. Because I, I understand that there going to be some changes going forward with regard to your process and, and how we do things, which is fine. Well, Just I think it's a good know, analogy you know. because mm -hmm. um, when, I, when I've tried to educate people about replacement of an ambulance or a fire truck, people don't get it. And I say, well... You replace your cell phone every two years, and the technology changes. Yeah. So, you know, when an ambulance is five, six, ten years old, or a fire truck mm -hmm. 30 years old, what do you think's changed in 30 mm -hmm. years? Mm -hmm. So it's just trying to <coughs> put it basically on a level that people can identify with. Right. You know, ten years ago, we didn't all have these with us at all times, and we didn't have a little mini computer with us and take pictures all the time right. either. But it's, just a, yeah. it, it's something I think people can relate to a little bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so certainly that would be, I mean, as you know, that would be very difficult for us to incorporate in our budget, but whatever way, you know, I understand these things are are difficult, mm -hmm. you know, to determine. So whatever you guys determine, you know, let us know, and um, and we'll go from there. So, okay, okay thank you. Thank you very much. Um, maybe what we should do is, um, maybe Adam, if you could update, it, any, uh, update us on any projects that... Sure. So that you had uh, that were being worked on? Most of mine are still going. Um, the gym window replacement is in front of the Building Facilities Committee. So my projects all, once they get approved, 95% of them go to the Building Facilities Committee. And then they rate them and they go through and advise how we're going to go forward. So uh, I'm just, mine take a year at least from start to begin, start to finish. So right now the gym windows, the uh, fire alarm system, and... Um, there was one more. I mean, oh no, those two are in front of the building facilities yeah. committee. The municipal air conditioner replacement is still up in the air um, with a couple of snags that they found as they were looking into it. So uh, we're going to see how that's going to turn out. Um, and we have 
the gym doors were replaced. I think I had twenty thousand dollars. I, I believe we came in under fifteen. Mm -hmm. um, they were replaced, painted, they look beautiful. So, and I think that's all I ended up with, if I remember right. Yeah. So, um, those are the projects. They they are going forward with the building facilities committee. Um, we meet next week on the sixteenth. Mm -hmm. Again, hopefully the uh, a company is coming in to advise us a little more on the gym windows. Uh, oh, the police department windows, I'm sorry, that's going to be brought up. That's the other project I was yeah. looking for. That's going to be signed. Hopefully, a lot of these projects you'll start seeing in springtime, start okay. moving forward. Good. And one of the, you know, again, one of the things that was so important was energy, mm -hmm. you know, to save on, I mean, we're just blowing through fuel. Mm -hmm. With the, right, right. how old was the boiler? Yeah. The boiler was in 1962. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> So and that's, uh, that's another thing. Yeah. How many times did we talk about that boiler needing to be oh. replaced on capital before we had an issue with it that put it out of service for good? Like I said, I don't that's, know how that, long that's, that's like the perfect example of yeah. um, what we're trying to avoid. So. <laughs> and, and again, the alarm system, too. I mean, this has been ongoing oh, for many system, years. Yeah. And the only catch with the fire alarm system that we're having right now is the company came in, we went through it all, and one of the recommendations that they started discussing was making the police department as a separate system versus the town hall. And tying it all together, because if one day the police department decides they're gonna have their own building and get out of the basement here, the panel should be really up here. You know, we don't have a monitoring company because when the alarm goes off, the dispatch is sitting right there. Mm -hmm. So yes, we save money in that aspect, but in the future, if we had this whole building, including the police department, on one panel, it's up where it's supposed to be. You know, it, it, they're looking at the future, which is what we had a meeting about. They're looking at, hey, you know, 10 years from now, you want this. This is supposed to last you 30, 30 years, so 30 or more years. So if you do this now, you know, and do the whole building, put it on one system, you know, it would actually benefit and actually save money. So that's what we were looking at in the long run. So that's kind of where we're at right now with that. Okay. Sounds good. Where are we at with highway stuff? Highway, uh, I'm just going to go back a little bit to what Matt <coughs> said. If you take a look on the fire station lawn right now, there's five vehicles there that <laughs> were run into the ground. And that's, and that's basically, we had no choice to replace them. So I think what we're doing is a good thing. We're, we're picking it up before it gets to that point. We're having a sealed bid auction coming up next week for stuff that we don't want that to happen anymore. So by doing what we're doing, I think, is, is a great thing. Um, so as far as highway, um, again, thank you to this committee and the townspeople for our equipment. We got our asphalt hot box. Um, it's great on days like today when there's a pothole, we can go out and make our repairs mm -hmm. without putting cold patch in that's going to come out in a, the next rainstorm. So that is purchased and in place. Our wood chipper. Uh, has arrived. Um, we've used it uh, on a few occasions now, um, and it, it's it's great to have. It's safety oriented. No one's going to get hurt running this thing like the 1962 model that we had. Um, Would have been nice to have it when we had the tornado too. I can't agree <laughs> more. You know, but uh, we have it now. Yep, exactly. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but everything came in under budget. Uh, and then the two 550 trucks we got with the plows. Um, by going out to the process that um, the town administrator, Matt, had us use, we saved about $9,000 a truck from the That's original cool. quote I got mm -hmm. on a competitive bid process. So that, that, that worked out great. Both trucks are in service. Uh, they're, they're great. Um, and so all, all the equipment for highway has been purchased. Very good. So again, um, if we could have that on paper yep. or whatever. Yeah, so for next time, I'm not as organized as Courtney, um, but, but I again, do have these numbers so we can keep track of them. Yeah. yeah, if we could have it so we can speak about it and if people question, we have it. And yep. again, it's educating the public. Mm -hmm. So Gene produced the report. It's not that we don't have it, I just yeah. didn't take it with me. Sure. The other thing we have that the committee, we have a very detailed report from Gene on past projects that have not yet been expended. Yeah. So the, the biggest fudge factor is in this building where we've got two things that happened. 
some projects came in under or and have not yet been completed, mm -hmm. but the taxpayer approved the money a long time ago, so it's still available. Mm -hmm. So I think the boiler, the AC, and some of the windows were all thrown together yeah, into was, one. Yeah. Yeah. So there's still an unexpended balance there that's actually fairly substantial that can still be used. Okay. Then there's an issue like with the police department windows where the architect's report in the past included those windows. Yes. So there is no design component to that specific project. Now it's just go out to bid for the installation. So what we're checking now is whether or not the design is still valid according to the more current standards because it was a pretty old design. Mm -hmm. But I think we've probably saved a lot of money with the windows here on the first oh, floor. Well, we just the heat alone you can see the difference. It makes Plus a ton the of sense. safety of it because the and, and the boiler because mm -hmm. walking into the building and yeah. smelling the fumes or mm -hmm. the windows with the water dripping inside on the walls up here. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so what the, the impact will be much higher actually in the police department because they're a 24 sure. 7 operation and their backup heat is electric. Yeah. So, if we can get to a more efficient way of, mm -hmm. of keeping the space tight to the weather, then we might not utilize the electric the same, to the same degree. The gym windows is technically in progress because we've done the asbestos sure. yep. assessment and we have, uh, yep. we, we, there will be an abatement that yes, will be part of this. Yep. So, um, the MS4 compliance design, so that's our storm mortar compliance design that went out, that's came in right around 36000 mm -hmm. so it's under the budget, yeah. and that work is being completed by the engineering firm now, as we speak, I'm trying to make sure we call. The portable radios, you're going to speak to that in your ambulance, right? So uh, the won't steal the Chief's Thunder article. 11. We did the defibrillators together with police and fire. Mm -hmm. So the defib came in, <coughs> and then the only other one is your 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 bay exhaust system. So go ahead, Don. I'm done. Uh, so we have uh, an exhaust system in the fire station. We have to hook the fire trucks up mm -hmm. so that so that carbon monoxide and diesel exhaust, which is a carcinogen, does not fill the space. So mm -hmm. it gets vented out. Um, that was put in. In 2010, mm -hmm. it was had issues. I got some part of it that wouldn't wouldn't it wouldn't work correctly. So um, we, I think we put 12,000 in for that, and uh, I believe we've only spent about seven. Uh, so we had done. Uh, they had sensors and things like that that had to be updated. So mm -hmm. that work's been completed. Uh, I think we're a, a good amount of money under budget, probably at least $5,000 under budget. Um, what we did was we just, with a new, we just switched the exhaust on, on which side it came out on one so we didn't have to change a hose and things like that. So, so we were able to save a lot of money because of that because we didn't have to hang that new hose and reconfigure things. So um, we saved the taxpayers some money on that. Defibrillators? I was explaining to so everybody, with the chief authorized moving the exhaust pipe on the piece of equipment oh. itself. Right. So I'm sorry. Somebody mm -hmm. cut and welded and moved that over to the proper side. Just so that right. So that saved us a lot of money. It would have probably thinking. cost us a lot more money. Rather yeah. than yeah. moving the holes yeah. and everything. Right. And I think, it, I think, you know, I, I figured, well, we're always going to have trucks that, replacing trucks. I don't want to move a hose every time I, I it's just easier to move an exhaust <laughs> switch it to come out on the other side if it's at all possible so that's what we did with that um, looking down the road I think we'll, and, and that was able to save us some money um, we also ordered defibrillators uh, there's a, a defibrillator in each fire uh, our frontline piece of apparatus one on uh, a ladder truck one in our new engine three one in my cruiser and one in each ambulance for if it has to run at a basic level because it's it's uh, a call where they don't have a paramedic available they're still able to, mm -hmm. to function with a defibrillator we also got a defibrillator for the highway the senior center and and uh, and the library so 
most of the town buildings all now have defibrillators, and we've made them so that they're compatible with our, our monitors on the ambulance as well. So uh, we were able to come in under budget or right about budget with those. Uh, portable radios, um, we have 10 portable radios um, ordered. I haven't got them back, we're under, we're under budget with those as well. Um, I should, I should be receiving those. We'll be changing our frequency. We'll be talking more about that down the line as we talk about what uh, Mr. Wojcik was talking about as far as upgrading our system with police, fire, and highway so that we're all able to communicate with each mm -hmm. other and be effective that way. So those portables will um, be in soon. We've still got a balance of 15 that we have to get. We've got a grant in for that, and we also have wall and lake money. we just got to figure out how to access it. And then finally, we have an ambulance, a new ambulance that's functioning. So um, that's running very well. It's already time to change the oil on it for the first <laughs> time. So <laughs> anyway, that's where we're at as far as, as, far as the Chief, how many goes. ambulances do we have? We have two. two. And what's the state of the other one? It's not in good shape. <laughs> um, back up for a second. The ambulance, um, we use the RFP process this time instead of, so instead of asking mm -hmm. for bids, we ask mm -hmm. for proposals. We asked the manufacturers to come back, and the chief and his group did a wonderful job of writing the specs. That we want an ambulance that can do these things. Must haves and compared those. Correct. And so everybody came back with their own configurations and kind of worked out that we're, we're switching almost to a completely forward fleet between John's process and Ken's process. We're almost all forward body uh, chassis that mm -hmm. we're mounting this equipment on. And we got very inventive because we saved a bootload of money mm. um, as far as buying the truck. We got it for probably, we upgraded the stretcher system that's now required. That, that adds $48,000 to the price of an ambulance. We paid $228,000 for our ambulance. Because we'd saved so much money on the truck, we were able to buy another uh, CPR machine so both of the trucks have the same CPR machine, so there's no, re it's redundancy and people are familiar with both units. Um, and we actually had the radios put in under the same price with the truck. We, mm -hmm. we were able to put the radios in and not, not pay for installation and buy new radios. We were actually, we want the radios as part of our, mm -hmm. as part of our package. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so. And if I may. Uh, I, I ask these questions because I'm from the private side and I'm trying to think in the public sector. Mm -hmm. So in a <coughs> RFP where we would have put out the bid for these ambulances or these pieces of machinery, capital, whatever you want to call them, um, are we allowed to piggyback onto that or is that good for just this purchase? In other words, are you allowed to when you enter into a contract to sell to a municipality, can you not piggyback off of other municipalities' pricing? You can if it's to your advantage to do so. So Correct, yeah. The, there is no hard and fast rule. Mm -hmm. There are times when we use a statewide contract and we piggyback with a state agency or other municipalities through the state's combis and other, sure. and we do very well. But we can't just accept that because, for instance, my favorite example is, is road salt. We piggyback on with how many? Thir uh, th uh, 13 towns. 13 yeah, towns, 13. but we don't go through the state blanket system. We go through the town of Shrewsbury as the yep. lead, and we destroy them. <laughs> we have the best deal on rock okay. salt. <laughs> In the state. In the yeah. state. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I would say the region, because when I compare it to Rhode yeah. Island, I... I the time I worked in Rhode Island is 40 minutes from the Port of Providence where all the salt is coming. It's where it's all coming. <laughs> and they paid an extra dollar per ton oh compared to what we got for a price. And that really adds up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. But so it's just a matter of knowing, and I think it works out that way because the 13 towns are all kind of close to each other. Mm -hmm. And so the trucks come up and they're not wasting their time and blah, blah, blah. And uh, we also go out to bid it. 
precisely that point of the year mm -hmm. yeah. when you should go out to bid and keep yeah. our barns it's cold good. for the summer. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and once again, I, I, I'm just trying to kind of it, it, find a semblance between the private and this, um, so so we don't let's necessarily amortize anything. We pay for it cash outright as a city. So the the I'll back up for a second. So mm -hmm. basically, my job. I feel you know. I feel like I feel like radar. Remember Mash? Yeah. I'll find always, a way to get it. Always for looking you. for a yeah. better price. That's really what we have to do. We can never accept anybody's yeah. representation. Yep. We have to challenge everything. Um, as as far as using installment payments, if that's your question, mm -hmm. um, no, the, the policy of the town to this point, and I agree with it, is to buy things with cash. Sure, I understand. I think there's a threshold limit. It's probably right around a million dollars, but we just can't do it. So whether we're talking about a highway barn or we're talking about a ladder truck or uh, complete redo of the roof and AC in this building, you're starting to press. Either we're going to get grant money or we have to do it through installment. But we've avoided that. What? How does that save money for the taxpayer? We don't pay interest. We don't have any lease charges sure. or anything. And I also think this is about public choice. It's got nothing to do with procurement, the science of procurement. This is about politics and public choice. The town I worked in before Douglas, we bought everything on installment. And so we had an amortization schedule and we would pay for an engine for 10 years at the fire department. We would right. pay for an ambulance over a course of its useful life. So we had five years of payment. We were carrying $56,000 a year just yeah. on interest. Yeah. Managing and the debt. it yeah. also became, I thought, a, not a deceptive, it wasn't deceptive, but it, it created the false impression that had more. You, yeah, exactly. Because every year you came back to the budget process, you have a long list of payments you were making on things. And what people didn't realize was, in some cases, we were still paying on stuff that wasn't even working anymore. Because we bought a lemon or whatever. That clarifies <laughs> everything that I had. Ex I have one other thing for today. Next time I'll have more. So, Chief, you were talking about those um, defibs. Did we buy those outright? Yeah. Okay. Because those are pretty penny a These pop. These were about, uh, well, for certain, we bought three of them that for for uh, buildings that wouldn't weren't like the type that you would put on an ambulance sure. or put in a police sure. cruiser. Four of those four of those defibrillators went in police cruisers too. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. So we did that as a public safety combination between police and fire uh, presentation. Um, <clears throat> but what we did was we did an RFP, just like Matt was saying, and we went out and basically we we pit them against each other. Yeah. They they yeah. forced to mm -hmm. shop in their pencil, mm -hmm. and because we had bought physio cardiac monitors, we had a good relationship. They might they you're sure. already giving them some good business, so they'll shop in their pencil even more for you, and that's what we found. And uh, plus we were. The issue we wanted is we wanted compatibility. Technology, right? We wanted compatibility yeah. with technology, yeah. and and if I did, if I put a defibrillator on a patient, I don't want to have to peel. And when I have someone that shows up with a cardiac monitor now, I don't want to have to peel those pads off. Yeah. <laughs> and, and reapply. And right. Now, yeah. now we just paid for two sets of pads, so we wanted we wanted the uh, the compatibility with with the unit. So, in other words. If that defibrillator gets there, the next piece of equipment might be a, it's a physiocardiac moan. I just unplug it. I don't have to. I just sure. plug it right into the, the what's sure. there. So, in the instances where and you, I need you to just fill me in on this stuff, right? In the instances where, like, let's say there was a service available that would upgrade the technology as part of that. Do you, do we as a capital improvement committee ever recommend you should probably go to the private market for this or is that something that we strictly stay away from? That's just my need to know, I guess. I don't think we ever have recommended. To my knowledge, we have. Okay. No. Yeah. But if a cost analysis were brought to bear that showed that, would 
that be something we want to put on the table? I'll give you a for instance. The the AEDs, the technology changes, it advances, Mm -hmm. and you want to stay current, right? Mm -hmm. There are companies that actually will rent that unit to you and come and service it and upgrade it as needed to keep you ahead Mm -hmm. of it. It's sort of like an IT slash first aid combination, right? So we could do that. So in we could enter into a contract with a lease component to it. I haven't seen it offered to us in the public okay. sector. What we have done, though, so you know that we trade things in. So there is some. So like or the defense, there's a trade in value. We yeah. got money. We got five hundred dollars a unit for oh, the good. old ones that yeah, were no good. Yeah. And with the defibrillators that we bought, we got a five year warranty, so that we don't even need to buy the. Right. The package, package to, maintain. to maintain it. That sounds. It's yeah. part of the warranty. Yeah. So I, I just trying to wrap my head around how this all works, and I don't think there's any hard and fast rule. I think you need to look at every situation and evaluate it from every okay. angle mm-hmm. before you decide what you do, and that's what you do yeah. when you do your RFPs and your and you yep. and you write your specs, you know. And and this is where it's adv- advantageous where you build a trust factor with certain. Companies, sure. you know what I mean. Uh, but again, y- you force them to compete. Compete. Yep. You know, that's what we did with the defibrillators and the cardiac monitors. We we had uh, sixty thousand dollars worth of cardiac monitors a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we had to. We had to because we had we had bought monitors when we first went to the advanced life support level, and then there was a recall on those units. Oh. One that said that they could kill a patient. Well, yeah. I can't run yeah. that piece of equipment. Yeah. <laughs> really? I can't take that liability. Okay. So we ended up, you know what? We're, we're going to go out and get new monitors. And the two leading companies were, uh, we made them compete with each other. And there were certain, i give you a perfect example. One cardiac monitor, I'm an older guy, so if I'm, in, I'm, if I'm having a squint and look at that as I'm treating a patient, and I have to look at emojis, to take a blood pressure, that's a problem with me. Because some of the emojis look the same when you don't yeah. because they're small. Right. I told the, the guy, I don't I don't do emojis. Yeah. I want I want it labeled the what pink it is. off the cheeks yeah. more off. <laughs> yeah. So it, 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 my guys laugh because I told the, the salesman that. But uh, but what we do too is when we're looking at that type those that type of equipment. We'll we'll ask them. We, we we want your product for two weeks. We want to we want to run it on calls so that you know. And we'll compare. <laughs> we'll compare, and then we'll make you sharpen your pencil. <laughs> so and we we try to do good by the taxpayers when it comes to that because it's equipment that's being used on them as well. Mm-hmm. So. But I think you know Caesar has a, a good legitimate good questions. Point They're absolutely good questions. Some communities have gone to an ambulance service, right. and some of you here, they're not happy after they've done it. Correct. But I think it, you know, it's always worth looking into to see if it can save the town money, sure. but also the quality of it. So. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll, we'll fully address your question. I think in the next meeting, I'm not prepared to have this conversation now, but we'll take up Courtney's point. Mm-hmm. about IT and how we want to deal with this as a, mm-hmm. is it a capital item or is it not a capital item? Um, <coughs> I think we, we fight past, that in the private world too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think we understand that software is depreciated very rapidly, but we have some servers, we have some other things that have a little bit longer life that can be multiple operating systems Certainly. being installed, and so they, they look and feel like capital because they're expensive. Um, I think right now we're just trying to iron out where the heck we are. Mm-hmm. And the schools are in a better spot than we are as a, as a town. The IT firm that we have now is in the process of stripping out the charter wide area network, which we were renting. So here's an example where okay. we get nailed renting something. Sure. Mm-hmm. So we were renting their equipment, and then we had a suite of services that they were providing us. Well, they were never actually fully utilized. So we had, for instance, voice and it was never right, installed right. or used, but there was a charge associated with it. So we identified this tremendous inefficiency in the town's IT. So he's stripping all that out. He's going to build his own wide area network here that the town will own. 
We just bought the firewalls through Sonic Wall or right. anything else. And we're going to save like 12 grand a year and a bill that was 28,000. So we're yeah. almost cutting it in half. So we're justifying the use of the IT guy and his purchases of equipment. Right. But now it's all here. We're going to control it. Right. And that's going to be much, much better for us. So the next question will be, okay, so we've rewired the building to Cat 6. We've built our own white area yeah. network. So now we have all these workstations that are, so Microsoft is telling us that we're no longer going to service our operating system. We're not going to do right. patches anymore. So we're at that point. Is that capital or not? Well, it's a lot of money, but it may not be capital because the workstations are transient or... Yeah, I, I, I'm, I think I'm we'll end up splitting some things. We'll, we'll say that, you know, a, a large plotter printer, which we're thinking of recommending for the town engineer, and the, that entire department, building, conservation, sure. everything, probably 8000 bucks. But it's going to last for a long time, and it's going to be a workhorse. It's going to do a bunch of things for us. But the workstations, I don't know. Well, I think we'll have to really think long and hard about whether mm -hmm. we'll yeah. all that. So there's no real, <laughs> excuse the expression, return on investment when you're sitting around a capital table like this. There's no way to grade it based on. We don't have an ROI on. measure. Yeah. Okay. And that's why, just, that's why the scoring that, system becomes hard, yeah. right? No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's the part that I was trying to grasp because I, you know, that's ROIs are my life, right? So, okay. It's it's more like we have a uh, we have these hard and fast metrics that we can't escape. We don't have ROI, but we have uh, a tax collection rate. Sure. So, how are we equipping the tax collector and, and treasurer's departments? You know, if with if the actual valuation of the thing today versus what it was what it would cost to replace new yeah that that should be taken into consideration yeah because yeah. even that pipe from 1920 is going to cost a lot more than 1920 dollars oh, to replace yeah. it right yeah. yeah absolutely in fact it was probably better better made in 1920. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, it's that 1950s yeah. and 1960s right. when they made everything out of plastic and yeah. thought it would last forever. Yeah. It, it doesn't. That's yeah. those are the ones that are the Tupperware that are school. <laughs> the Tupperware <laughs> school of plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So okay, do we want to talk I've about uh, the capital oh, go ahead. Um, so how much have you got left in the Wallam Lake funds? <coughs> I'm not really sure, but I, I'm going to say it's, I, I, I would guess, I probably shouldn't do this, Gene. No, let me guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get you. Okay, sorry. I will try, no, I will try very hard not to express frustration. Let me just put it this way. Our ongoing dialogue with our friends at DCR yes. is less than optimal in terms of how quickly they're getting us answers and how accurate the answers are. They've told us we've got about 33000 in the Wall and Lake account, which we're having a hard time believing because it was almost that much the last time we checked, and that was an intervening summer. Right. So we it's know be double that this that. summer was, but we know that the previous balance was more than one year. Right. So how much, what's the rate that we're accruing every year is really the answer we need okay. from them. Yeah. Last year, the summer was odd. Is My recollection is that it was either blazing hot, like beyond yes. ridiculous, yeah. or it was raining and yes. people weren't going to the beach right. on the weekends. Right. So I don't know if it was a good revenue year or not, but we, for purposes of conversation, we think we have about 33,000. Okay. Um, also, to make sure we all understand, the, gov the, the final budget that was passed did include an earmark for 100,000 for an ambulance for Douglas that we are, again, trying to interact with the state. They're hinting that this is a reimbursement. Well, if that's true, we better hurry up and Get clear it out yeah. before they scoop that money at the end Absolutely. of the year. Absolutely. And then we have... <coughs> I did talk to Rep. McKenna yesterday about okay, that. So I'll just, my last thing is, the first day, the very first day, believe me, that there's a pot with a cannabis plant in it, <laughs> we get ten grand from the grower, <laughs> so that'll probably occur sometime in the next six months. So, in the back of your mind, 
the host community agreement earmarks that for uh, in for an ambulance. So we we, we kind of need to get to this. How yeah. are we going to fund ambulances and just create the fund and stop putting money in? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. But you, we're talking to. I I just he's going to be talking with Fatman, Senator Fatman, because that was more something that he sponsored. It was a Senate deal. Um, but he he seems to figure if if. But even if we had to go all the way to town meeting, there's still time to get the money in if we if we were to do it this year, which you know, we'll discuss. But um, that's my conversation with him about that. Um, to change the topic a little bit, so I know last year we kind of threw ambulance was like a debt exclusion. So that this whole will fix all that. Will this months in capital plan kind of change that? And it won't. That I mean, we were like highway trucks expensive, so it's on a debt exclusion, or a fire trucks expensive, and it's the capital plan should include within its. In Courtney's right, you do a thirty-year plan, but you you formalize the five. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you do it all the way up. Right. The different methods that Massachusetts makes available for funding capital all need to be discussed and addressed as uh, how we're going to do it this year versus other years. Our goal last year, and we've said it over and over and over again, was to no longer use free cash to support the operation budget of the town. Free cash is most appropriately used either to for long term stabilization or for OPEB or you know really in capital. Mm -hmm. So there was, you know, a, a big chunk of what we've been generating we want to earmark for capital expenses. So one time Revenues for one-time expenses. Um, the way they want you to do this is is you start with your revenue, the very top line, and you make your allocation immediately. X percent for operating, mm -hmm. X percent for capital. Mm -hmm. So that your yearly revenue is picking up along with Chapter 90, along with grants mm -hmm. and free cash. That's your capital budget. And you don't... Uh, skimp on it because in the long run it catches up to you. That's kind of how, that's the direction we're going into. Now there will be some strategic conversations. There will be in fiscal 23, I believe, a debt excluded item is going to roll off. So mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you do then? You know, that's a really heady conversation. That's a town meeting for conversation, in my opinion. We mm -hmm. don't decide any of that. That goes back to the taxpayer. Do you want your taxes to go down a little bit that year? Or do you just want to keep them level and just reprogram that money for another debt or capital excluded mm -hmm. item so that you're keeping up with your capital plan and not mm -hmm. doing giving it short shrift? If you were willing to do it for that 10, 15 year period, you want to just keep it going for capital. <clears throat> but those all have to be addressed in the capital improvement mm -hmm. plan. But the, the, the idea here is we never want to come into a year and have to raise money at the last minute yeah. to buy something. I mean, emergencies happen, but we should be able to avoid them. Mm -hmm. Did we want to talk at all about uh, the forms, capital first forms that's on the agenda? Uh, well, I think we talked earlier about giving instructions to department heads. I mean, okay. I'll be looking for you guys. I'd be requesting a motion from you to direct me to, you know, or actually direct the chair to send instructions out to the department heads. Please, uh, you know, just begin to arrange your items and their possible cost. Yeah. Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor of uh, sending the directions out to the department yeah, heads? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, it's unanimous, so that's what we'll do. And I, I, you know, I think we, we need to make sure that these departments respond because there are some that don't. And I think then the biggest customers are all here and, and Courtney. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but there are some that don't, and then it, at the end you pick up, oh, well, I needed this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when do we need it by? Because then it gets into the budget, and so. We well, no, well, he, normally. <laughs> We obviously need it before town meeting, which is usually the first week of May. So oh, yeah, but we it needs to come way No, I, 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 I yeah. Yeah. So I would say 
I when would did say we send it out I would say right around this time. If yeah. we sent if we sent it out if we sent the instructions out now, yeah. a couple weeks max. Hmm. Yeah, yep. so that we can well, start meeting. Yeah. Take some pilot. time to chase prices and yeah. Yeah. estimates. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So we can at least expect to get to work on it by February 1st. That sounds right. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. 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 I agree. So that's what I'll, that's the dead, that's the drop dead deadline date I'll have that I'll send out is to have that. I'll send out the directions, um, but they're going to be sending it to you, correct? Yeah, because I'll assemble it. All right. All right, so we'll do that. February 1st, have them to Matt, so we can have our first meeting and start meeting with department heads. Okay. But Sounds are good. we, in the meantime, before then, going to have a meeting to discuss the Munson plan and and our obligation is to look yeah. at that and yeah, that situation criteria. assessment should be in the same set of instructions from you, and that should be due first. Okay. And again, they can coordinate. Yeah, do we want to ask them for a five-year plan? I'll be honest. Every time I've done it, I always do five years yeah, out. We've all. I thought you've always forward. Been. I mean, I'm trying it's to think. One five years longer. Yeah. Start with five and see what we get. Yeah. Uh, Makes do, sense. During that process, do we ask them for their grading on whether or not this has got useful life? It's ready. It's at its end. It has it in the form. It's in a form yeah. for each yeah. individual. Yeah. 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 It asks yeah. what their use, wh what the useful life of the item yeah. is. Uh, this is the, this what their priority, what priority it is for them. Yeah. These are just all money, but you can look at that's the form that we've been using. You know, it just gives you, yep. you know, useful life and whether there's any kind of uh, supplemental funds. Grants. Yeah, Have they grants. gotten a but? Yeah, but uh, grant. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So those are just yep. okay. So uh, that brings us to known projects. Just a chair, I'm just trying to hurry us along. Mm -hmm. um, we know that we are going to at least propose a revamp of the, the public safety radios, certain components of it. We've had some difficulties with having our departments on different bands. And mm -hmm. We went out and got some frequency, so we're going to try to match all this up and make sure the highway is part of this conversation as well. Um, we are going to apply for round two community compact. So we get designation funds, which we used for the street light replacement, which is complete, and the weatherization and uh, replacement of the AC at the library. Okay. So the AC is completely done, all with grant money. And then the insulation will be sprayed in the roof, and the doors and windows are going to be weatherized. Nice. At most of the doors. That, that will be done in the next week or so. Uh, we just had some issues with permitting. But that's done. So that was your automatic. Now it's competitive. Right. We're thinking that we want to submit a competitive grant application for the weatherization component of a new roof on this building. Now, what does that mean? We have, this was an old school, so there's what's called a passive duct system, which basically takes the heat from the building and throws it into the atmosphere. It's just like for the sake of moving the air through so, so the kids wouldn't get sick. Yep. We, you know, that's no longer best practice. No. So there's perforations. That's not even practice. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, the, you see, they look like an old battle, the, the uh, USS Maine, right? Yeah. All right, with those great big horns on the, yep. on the, <laughs> on the deck. Yep. They're up there. That all needs to go away. And then right. we've got a bunch of outrageously dead AC yeah, units. Yeah, we have four units. So the second floor of this building was a school. Even when this was a municipal center, they revamped it in '96. There's four, yeah, preschool. They have four units on the roof uh, that do heat and AC, and as each unit does two classrooms. Well, right now, it's, it's two of them are shut right off because the heat exchangers are rotted. There, it's like eleven thousand each one right. to replace them. Right. So we don't have the funds for that. Uh, that's actually in my capital plan too. Um, but if you do the roof over. It all has to be, you know, you're ripping a lot of that out at the same time. Sure, you're you're trading some efficiency for 
for yeah. tonnage. Yeah. So, and then you could actually change it to one unit and do the whole second floor, probably a lot cheaper and easier, mm -hmm. less to maintain, you save yourself a lot of money. Sure. And the, go, going back to the roof, the roof was um, 1995, they put it on. It was a 15 year roof. Then they overlaid on a tire and gravel roof. They just saved themselves money by throwing on top of another roof. What kind of medium did they use on the roof though? Just the, uh, the rubber. So yeah, so they just overlaid on top of it. So you have to remove both coated, you know, both sections of roof get down back to the wood deck again and then work your way up. So you're already in that point. So you can remove the passive duct system. You can do all this work at the same time and combine them all. So that's where we're at. How much, uh, how much maintenance stuff do we have on the roof of this building? So right now, right now, I mean, of course, what happens is we have lift spots because it's getting in between the passive duct system. We have any time it heats up and you get the big lifts and you, so right now I have it, uh, the guy come out a few times a year and patch it for me. It's off the warranty, it was only 15 year. So, you know, we patch it, and we check it all the time. There's some great companies out there that use the membrane that you put up there. It's just so energy efficient. It's like a blanket. Yeah. Yep. So we had one claim last year because we had a, a flood up there. Uh, one of was especially bad storm. Mm -hmm. That 39,000. Yeah. In that area, it's in the thirty thousand. So that's down. that's that's in the treasury yeah. now. All right. And then remember, before I said there are capital funds that need to be reprogrammed. Yeah. So we're hoping that some combination of grant funds, funds that mm -hmm. are already been appropriated by the taxpayer, would be minimal additional, but we would do, be doing a very big project. Yeah, I would think. I would think that's. Yeah. Still Don't, pretty, we know uh, about that. Ballpark. I know the schools. Uh, they're going to have a list this year. Yeah. I don't know about okay. you guys. I think you guys. Do you need a dump truck? Yes. Dump truck will be requested in probably a second. The, the second ambulance is just a thorn on our side because it, it does. Uh, it, it does, will be funny, until, it does it will, funny stuff. It will be until we lose somebody yeah, because exactly. of it, right? Yeah. And a lot well, of these we projects. Run it. Uh, we, that, that's yeah. kind of the decision. That's basically my run. problem right now is. I've got GM coming to scan it, but we have to drive it, and I'm not putting a patient in it right now. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's too risky. It, the liability, that I, I can't have a cardiac arrest or have a problem with a real sick patient and have a truck break down in the middle of that call. Mm -hmm. I just can't do it. So, so without getting into a lot of details, the transmission issue, and the, the diagnostics are for some reason too challenging for local vendors to figure out. So I'm sure I think it's what happened is it's the first year that they put DEF, diesel exhaust fluid, in ambulances. And it was, because it was the first year, it's been a nightmare. Wow. So, the lesson time. we've <laughs> learned, and probably we'll be, we may even want to reduce this to a policy, is that we won't be the first in anymore. Mm -hmm. So next year is a brand new year, brand new generation of cruisers. We might skip a year because we don't want to be like any place yeah. for that. Because mm -hmm. that's just... It never works out for a small town. You get a lemon, we're really stuck. Early adopters pay a lot of money. Yeah. I know, I, I had a 2009 Mini Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> Worst year ever. <laughs> Everything was upside down and backwards, and it was dead by 2014. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so that's the problem with that. But, uh, yeah, so. And quite honestly, um, we need two ambulances. Mm -hmm. We. We well, get, the population has increased. We get we get double calls. We've got we've yeah, it's been and and unfortunately, when you don't have that second ambulance, to me, what's most important is to make sure I can get to a patient. Mm -hmm. The other problem is you miss the revenue if that, you go mutual aid. If you go mutual aid, mm -hmm. so the other and it's a long period of time for them to get here. Right. I know uh, water is going to be here asking for some uh, pipes, and I think we're kind of we really are at the point. Now, last year, a fair amount of work got done as part of the North Street Bridge replacement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the stage was set to do some more significant work. Um, but it's, <coughs> you know, they, they need to be on a regular Interval, cycle yeah. of, mm -hmm. of yeah, You find that the more experience you garner doing that on a regular mm -hmm. basis, the more it translates into actual reductions in cost over mm -hmm. time. So there's definitely a correlation there. So we want to plan our, our next meeting? Yeah, let's, 
Well, let's go as far as you can, actually, because this is a daytime meeting. We're here. We work here. So it's really up to our citizen members, right. you know, what day works best for you and what time of the day. Mondays are no good for me. But other than that, and I can work around it if I have enough time. I mean, I think Thursdays and Fridays are good days, personally, mm -hmm. from, for me. But, I mean, Shirley, what are days that are good for you? Um, I'm open now. Or I had to have somebody at home, and I'm, I'm open, except if I have an appointment. Right. Um, so. What are you looking at? Today's the 11th. Um, do we want to plan one a week from today, or either next Thursday or next Friday? We have the auction next week. Friday, we do we have the yeah. auction? Yeah. Thursdays are better for me, Chief, okay. because it's a whole day. Um. So will we have information available by? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what I was thinking is, if we went and did our homework on the Munson, mm -hmm. then we come back and then we have some ideas mm -hmm. about, you know, we have some ideas about maybe how we want to change the process at all. Right. If we have some additional information, we could streamline it and make it better. Yeah. Is a week enough time to, to glean some some of that? So. Are you saying, uh, you're saying Tuesdays, but... Uh, Thursdays. Thursdays. Okay. So, the 17th? At what time? Yes. We want to go back to our 1 o'clock time that we normally do? Works for me. Is that good for you, C? Yeah, no, that's fine. Let me, let me ask the boss. Oh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know the boss? I do. He's a good friend. <laughs> On the... Asking for those reports, I'm of the opinion that you always want to start early, mm. under promise and over deliver kind of thing. If you ask for them on the 25th, you're going to get the stragglers in through the first, right? Mm. So you might as well. It's just my thought. You might want to just put the heat on them to get it done. Tell in them two to get weeks. it to the 21st, and then yeah, the 25th. 25th, right? Yep. Friday the 25th to turn it in, and then that'll give us another week just to make sure we have a buffer. But my question is, so if we meet on the 17th, this stuff you have to have to go on to the um, message that goes out to the departments? No? I, th I think really right now, if we just basically told them to start working on your capital, capital plan give us a five-year five plan and be prepared to present it okay. after the February 1st, that's where I would start. Okay. You know? Okay. So then we're not talking the 25th for them. Well, I well, would... To give them that date so they get their... Some get more. <laughs> yeah, they... Okay. Otherwise, people procrastinate. No, I, I agree. Yeah. It's just... So what... So we're, we're telling them soon, that, expecting to be the first. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how we're telling them the 25th, and so the late comers will be coming in, and we'll actually be hitting our marks. So do we want to meet on the 17th or 18th, or do we want to meet on the week of the 24th, 25th? I guess that's the question. No, right? I was getting from this conversation that we would do both. Yeah. Okay. So then let's. That's what I'm thinking. All right. So I would say right now, if we do the 17th and 17th the 24th. Is perfect. We should uh, that should yeah. we could get our leg work done on how the process is going to go and how okay. we're the criteria. Okay, that's basically okay. where I'm. I may not be available on the twenty fourth because I have court in Worcester, but it, I could be back in time. It depends on what happens. Okay, get the hanging judge. Make it a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an appointment on the seventeenth, the two o'clock, but it's right here in town. Um, okay, so I might have. To Ironically, I have first aid training. That morning, so uh -huh. I'll be ready by one o'clock. Okay. So what seventeenth and twenty fourth good to start? Yep. Yeah. yeah. If we have to adjust at the next meeting, we adjust. Sure. Okay. Anybody have anything else? I don't. Move we adjourn. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned.